Huh? All right, so we're getting started in 8.5. And this is going to deal with rational functions. So it starts out doing the domain, so I'm not going to redo a domain because we did them yesterday in 5.1. Same two problems it starts out with. I'm going to get into the asymptotes. Asymptotes. <laughs> I'll write that up here. Um, so we got a vertical asymptote. And then we'll have what we call horizontal asymptotes also. There is an oblique asymptote, but we don't do them in this class. So let's describe a vertical asymptote. So think about a vertical asymptote. When we draw a graph, it's going to be like an imaginary dotted line. Okay, so this is going to be an imaginary dotted line. that occurs where a rational function is undefined. So where a rational function is undefined. And since we went through 5.1 and even in the beginning of the year, Vertical asymptotes are going to happen where those solutions are when we're setting that denominator equal to zero, because those are the numbers that make it undefined. So those are going to be the numbers where the vertical asymptotes actually occur, okay? Um, vertical asymptotes come in the form of an equation. So they come in the form of x equals some number. So whenever it's undefined that, that'll be what the A is. So if I had a solution of two, X equals two, I would have an imaginary dotted line vertical at two on the X axis. So the graph cannot cross this line. And I'll just say the graph cannot cross the vertical asymptote. That must be some of them Latin words, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go a little darker so they can see that better on there. All right, so now I'll talk about a horizontal asymptote. And then we'll start playing with the graphs and looking for these, okay? So horizontal asymptote is like it's saying it's a horizontal imaginary line. that a graph tries to approach as the x's get very large or very small. Saying as we head towards positive infinity and negative infinity, 
these graphs have a tendency to try to get to a certain line, okay? So there's three cases on the horizontal asymptote. I'm just going to call that an HA and a VA will be my vertical asymptote, okay? Because remember, we're dealing with fractions. And y'all remember what the degree is of a polynomial? The degree is the highest exponent, okay? So the horizontal asymptotes look at the degrees. So if the degree of the top, so if the degree of the top is greater than the bottom degree, So that means I got stuff like x threes, x fours on top, and maybe x's or x squareds on the bottom. If the top has a higher degree, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Because what happens on this one is since you got higher exponents on top, when you put x values in there, the tops want to grow a lot more than the bottom. So eventually it's going to approach infinity on those, okay? Second case, the top degree is less than the bottom degree. <coughs> so that means I got higher exponents in the bottom. So as I'm putting in the numbers, the bottom is going to grow a lot quicker than the top. Okay, like an x squared and an x, I get 10 over 100, 100 over 10,000. That bottom's going to grow a lot quicker. And since the bottom's growing a lot quicker, this approaches y equals zero. So notice my vertical asymptotes will be x equals a number. My horizontals will be y equals a number because it's going along the y axis, okay? So the last choice, they're equal. So the top degree equals the bottom degree. If that's the case and my degrees on top match my degrees on bottom, then the horizontal asymptote depends on A over B where A and B are the lead coefficients for the top and the bottom. So A would be the lead coefficient on top. And then B is the lead coefficient on the bottom. So if I had, say, a 5x squared on top, a 6x squared on the bottom, my horizontal asymptote would be the 5 over six okay so it's only the coefficients when you got them equal to each other okay all right so our problems are going to have us finding vertical asymptotes horizontal asymptotes and then we will use those to grasp so i'm going to start with one of their tricky ones and go through we'll find the asymptotes and then i'll show you how to graph that okay they're not too bad if you got these uh, asymptotes going on. Now, y'all should have got a bonus thing last night. And y'all know how to do all them problems because we've already covered the material for that bonus, okay? All righty, so on this problem, I'm going to list the asymptotes. What that work hard for me to say? I'm going to list asymptotes and graph. And then it'll start doing problems where they ask for them individually, like the horizontal asymptotes or the verticals, okay? So this one wants a little bit of everything. So my function is r of x equals 3 over x squared minus 64.
Oh, no, this ain't the high-tech one yet, so we got some of them coming up. Um, this one, they gave me four pictures to look at for my answers, okay? But I'll sort of describe what we got going on. So first, I'm going to find the vertical asymptote. To find the vertical asymptote, they occur where this function is undefined, we said, right? Which means to find the vertical asymptote, I'm going to do that the same way I did on the domains. I'm going to set that bottom equal to zero. zero. So I'm going to set x squared minus 64 equal to zero. So y'all could quad that. That'd be a one, zero, negative 64 if you use a quad formula. But I like factoring, so we're going to factor. So I do got an x and an x in the front, right? That's the only way to get an x squared. The last sign is negative, so these will have unlike signs. Anytime the last number is negative, unlike signs on that. Now, there's not an x in the middle, right? So what's its number? It's a zero in the middle, right? A zero x in the middle, which means I need factors of 64 that will subtract and give me that zero. Eight and eight, right? No, you said eight. Plus eight and minus eight. Plus eight minus eight. Eight times eight is 64. And that's going to give me a negative. Plus eight and negative eight give me the zero, which is in the middle. So if you're missing that zero term, and this is what we call the difference of perfect squares. If y'all ever heard that, difference of perfect squares, they always factor into conjugate pairs. One will be plus, one will be minus, okay? So then the rest of this, set both in equal to zero so that we can find those asymptotes. So basically, it's going to be the same numbers you got if you was doing the domain, right? I get x equals a negative 8, and x equals a eight. positive 8. Okay. Um, and just watch it because a lot of times MathLab wants you to put it in equation form. x equals negative 8, comma, 8. Okay. All right, next I'm going to find the horizontal asymptote. So there is not a variable on the top of this, right? So since there's no variable up there, it's a degree zero. The bottom is a degree two because I got an exponent two down there. So the degree at the bottom is two. The degree at the top is a zero because there's no variable. So the degree of the bottom is greater than the degree of the top. Which means my horizontal asymptote is right there, right? So y equals zero. Now they'll ask you about an oblique asymptote, but you're going to just put there is no oblique asymptote because we don't cover them, okay? All right, so if I was going to graph this, just to get you a picture, an idea of what the picture is going to look like. Oh, I got eights. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll go out to tens on this because I got eights on this, okay? I got a negative eight, too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then down. part of graphing drawing all these graphs. Okay, so I said I got vertical asymptotes at negative 8 and positive 8. So over here at negative 8 on the x-axis, I'm going to draw a vertical line up. I'm going to do that at the positive 8 also. Now, I will say if you graph this on the calculator, y'all, anytime you got more than one part, you want to put that in parentheses if you're going to graph that, okay? So since you got more than one part on this denominator, it's got to be in parentheses unless you use your 
fraction notation in there. All righty, so let's see. My horizontal asymptote, y'all told me, was zero. Mm -hmm. So that means out here eventually as I head towards infinity and negative infinity, my graph is going to try to get to that zero eventually, okay? All right, so I need more information to see what's happening on this graph. So I'm going to find my y-intercept. So the y-intercept. Because I need to see where it's crossing here to know what's going to happen to my graph, okay? Because I'll explain these asymptotes as we get there. I will say that the horizontals, eventually my graph is going to try to get to that line, okay? The y-intercept, that's what's crossing this y-axis. To find that, can I just put a zero in for my axis? All right, ain't that how you find a y-intercept? Anything on this line has a y x value of zero right there. So to find a y-intercept, you're finding r of zero. So you're going to have what? A three over zero squared minus 64. I'm going to have to break out the calculator on that, right? Well, I know that's what a negative three over 64, right? So can we simplify that any further? Probably not. So a negative 364 is going to be in the negative y value end, right? And y'all, that's really close to zero. That'd probably be what? If you divide that, let's see what we get. Negative 3 divided by 64 is like a 0.04. So it's really close to zero, but it's right in here. Not at zero, but really close. Now, I know what's going to happen to this graph because this asymptote is not going to cross that x-axis. So what's going to happen is this part, as you get to this asymptote, is going to head down towards negative infinity. On this side, it's going to head down towards negative infinity. Now, I didn't do the top side because my zero was on the negative part of that y. Now, the reason I knew I didn't have any zeros where it crossed the x-axis was because to find those, you would set the top equal to zero. But that'd be a false statement, right? Three equals zero is false. So it's not going to have any x-intercepts. Now, here's the thing about an asymptote. Usually, if one side is shooting down, the other side is going to want to shoot up. So asymptotes will usually have opposite directions. And I'll show you what's happening there. Why that's happening, okay? Now, remember, I can't cross the x-axis, but as this goes out towards infinity, this is going to want to try to get to the zero, but it never will touch that zero, okay? It'll get really close. And then this side, We'll do the same thing. So that's your horizontal asymptotes. And then this is your vertical asymptotes. But I want y'all to, oh, I can't do this on mine, but I want y'all to see why is this going to infinity and why is this side going to negative infinity, okay? So I'm going to see what happens when I do an 8.5, okay? So put an 8.5 in for that x. So you'll have 3 divided by parentheses 8.5 squared minus 64. Okay. Now, that gave me a 0.3636. Okay. So where am I at? <coughs> 
right there, I had a 0.36. So I'm going to get closer to that 8. Instead of 8.5, I'm going to do, say, a 8.1. Okay? So 3 divided by parentheses, 8.1 squared minus 64, close parentheses. That gave me 1.86. But you see, these fractions, what's happening, the closer I get to the 8, my y values are actually going to get higher. So let me get really, really close to the 8. Let me do 8.001. And watch what happens. So 3 divided by parentheses, 8.001 squared minus that 64 gives me 187. So this is already shooting up to 187. If I added more zeros in there, did 8.00001, my numbers would be even higher. So it's the fractions that are causing my y values to shoot towards infinity, okay? This side, the closer I get from 7.999, the closer I get to the eight, that's gonna cause that side to go towards negative infinity, okay? It's just hard to see those because your calculators only go by ones usually for those X values on the table. Um, but that's why you'll have the graph shooting in different directions on those. And that's why that line looks like it's going towards infinity because it really is, okay? All right, so let me try that one. All right, so these ones will just find vertical asymptotes. Find the vertical asymptotes, and that we know how to do. We're going to take the bottom, set it equal to zero, and be done with them, right? All right, so we have a f of x is going to equal one over parentheses x minus four squared. So take the bottom, set it equal to zero. So that'll be x minus 4 squared equals 0. So vertical asymptotes is the same as we did on the domains, remember? So to solve that, it's got an exponent 2, so that wants me to write that twice, right? So I get an x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 0. And then I'm just going to pick one of those and set equal to zero and solve. Now you want to finish that off. I'm going to add four to both sides. So that I get X is a four. Now, I don't know if y'all remember, but when it's got an even exponent, it's not really... If you had your asymptote, this one would come down both sides. Try to touch that, member, because remember, even exponents, they were tangent to the x-axis. Y'all remember that from almost a month ago? <laughs> and we were doing it, if it was even, it touched it. If it was an odd exponent, it crossed through it. Y'all remember that back? Maybe. All right, but my answer is x equals 4. Okay, that'd be the only vertical asymptote I've had, okay? I'll tell you, they're not bad when you're finding vertical asymptotes or the horizontal asymptotes. It's bad when you're graphing them. But that's when it calls on all your memory. All right, this one will have uh, 
same thing, f of x equals x minus 6 over x squared plus 5x. Hang on, so set the bottom equal to zero. So quad would do that. One five zero, but I'm gonna factor it. So it's not perfect squares because it's being added. And it also violates it because it's got that X there. So if you was here the other day when I had something similar to that, the way I solved it was factored out a greatest common factor, because both of them have a X in them. So what'll happen, your X will come in front. So what would I actually put in my parentheses then? The X plus five. Mm -hmm. I'll use that to put my x plus 5. There you go. So now set both of them equal to 0 and be done. All right, so the second one, I'll subtract 5 and get x is a negative 5. But if you notice, every time you factor out a variable as the greatest common factor, you're going to get 0 100%. All right, so this one will be x equals 0, x equals negative 5. Now, they'll let you do it x equals 0, comma, negative 5 that way too, okay? And then some of them actually got A, B, C, D answers listing all the possibles. All right, so I'm going to step it up and do this one. F of x is going to equal x squared plus 3x minus 10. x squared minus 5x minus 14. All right, notice the top of this one has a trinomial also. So what I got to look for is to see if I have any of my factors from the bottom that match any factors from the top. If I got factors on top that match the factors on bottom, it's going to cancel out the vertical asymptote, but it'll still be undefined there. So what it does is it makes a hole in the graph. Instead of doing asymptotes, the graph will be going along and it'll just have a hole where it's undefined. That's only if I get a factor on top that cancels a factor on the bottom, okay? So when you got trinomials like this, you might have to factor both of these to tell. Over here, I knew because that was a 6, and I didn't have nothing on bottom that would have gave me an x minus 6, but when you got possible factors, you got to check them. So first, let's see what the bottom does. And we're going to factor that one. So we got an x squared, that's x and the x. Give me my signs. Okay, so it's a negative seven and positive two? Mm -hmm. Okay. So unlike signs. <laughs> so anytime that last number is negative, you got unlike signs. I mean, you did good, the larger number had to have the same sign as the five in the middle, okay? So then finishing out, x minus 7 would equal 2, I mean 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. So we're going to get, what, a positive 7 and a negative 2. So is it possible that this one factors and has one of those factors in it? Well, I got a 10 sitting there. And I know one of these factors is also a factor of 10 would be the 2. 
So you might want to check the top real quick. We're going to check the top because if I get a negative two, I got to cancel that asymptote, okay? So we need to check the top. for any factors that could match the denominator. Or I'm just going to say that match the uh, bottom. That denominator was too big. <laughs> so on the top, I had x squared plus 3x minus 10. I'm going to set that equal to zero. So I got the x squared. There's an x and an x. That's still going to be a plus and a minus. So what's my numbers this time? Five and two. So the five is the positive and the two be negative. Also, guess what? When you solve that, I'm not getting the same, am I? That gives me a negative five. Right? Second one, if you solve that's gonna give you a positive two. So positive two will not cancel a negative two, so my final answer would be x equals seven and x equals negative two, okay? But y'all, you gotta sort of check those uh, numerators to see if any factors will cancel. It ain't bad, it's just a lot of work on them. So you want to see one that will cancel, right? So I'm going to do g of x. g of x is going to equal an x to the third on top all over 2x to the third minus x squared minus 10x. So we will start out by setting that bottom equal to zero. Hmm. So that's not a quadratic yet because I don't have an x squared in the front. And I got an x to the third in the front. So, the first step to do to that, what do they all have? The x's. So, guess what? I'm going to factor out a GCF of a x for my first move. So, if you actually factor out an x, what are y'all putting in your parentheses? Yeah, you're taking one x away from everybody, so you got 2x squared minus x minus 10 in parentheses. Oh, this part now, we're going to factor. Now, some of y'all don't like it when they got numbers in the front to factor, so at that point, you could use the quad if you don't like factoring, okay? So you can knock the quad out now that you got a 2, negative 1, and negative 10 in there, okay? Um, anyone want to factor this by hand? I ain't never showed you all my no-fuss method, okay? So watch this. I'm going to take this on the side and factor this for you. Now I'm going to start it out just like I would anything. I'm going to put an x and an x in front of both of those. That 10 is negative, so one of these is positive, one of those will be negative. Now, when you got a number in front, you take the first number times the last number. So 2 times 10 is going to give me 20. And I don't even care about the signs. I just take, this is called the AC method. Y'all might have heard that in the past. But multiply the first number times the last and get 20. Now, find factors of 20 that have a difference of one. That's that middle number, right? So what factors of 20 will give me a one? 
Mm -hmm. And since the five is larger, it's going to be negative like the middle. So <coughs> five and four. But here's where we differ. Since we had to borrow that two to multiply by the 10, we now have to divide both our factors by that two. So divide by the two, since it was multiplied to get to 20. Okay, so we had to change our last number by multiplying by the two. So we divide that two back out. So can you simplify the first fraction? Yeah, that four will divide by that two. And four divided by two is? Can you simplify this fraction? So what happens, y'all, since we cannot simplify this fraction, this 2 we bring and put in front of that x. So that's going to give me a 2x minus 5. If you pull that out, you will get back to what we started with, OK? So that means over here, we just factored that. So we now have a x, x plus 2, 2x minus five. All that's going to be equal to zero. So this, I just call this side work. But remember, you could have hit that with a quad and quad spit out the answers, right? It should have gave you what a two fifths or, I mean, a five yeah, halves and a negative two. Because it finished it all the way through. So all three of these factors now, set them all equal to zero. So there's that GCF again, and it's still zero. So the second one I want to subtract two. And again, x equals negative two. And then the last one, add five, divide by the two. So two x equals positive five. Then I'll divide by two. And again, x is a five halves. But we knew that because they're always opposite from their fraction forms. So that was a negative five halves. My final answer was a positive five halves. Question, can I keep all three of these zeros or these uh, asymptotes? Because what's, what's on top of this one? X to the third, right? But remember, so let me write that. So we're looking at the top now. So the X to the third, if you set it equal to zero, since that's a Three, to solve that, you would take a cube root of both sides. The cube root of an x to the third equals the cube root of zero. So remember, radicals kill them exponents. So anytime the index of a radical matches an exponent, they cancel each other out, and you get an x. And then you know what's cube root of zero? Oh, so you're telling me I got an x equals zero on top. I got an x equals zero on the bottom. So guess what? This zero cancels out that asymptote. So that my only vertical asymptotes would be x equals negative two, and then x equals the five halves. What would happen at zero is it would make a hole in the graph. Because it can't be defined there, so it still can't equal that number. But it's hard to see those holes on our calculators because they're pixels and stuff. Um, but yeah, it would grow along, have a little hole, and then go on. Okay. So that makes sense. When you got polynomials on top, please check those to see if anything cancels with our asymptotes. Okay. So let's play with some uh, ooh, some horizontals real quick. Now the horizontals aren't as bad. As long as you got them three things wrote down that we wrote down a while ago, okay? And we're trying to figure it out. All four of y'all pretty much got A's in this class and they're all here. Must be a coincidence, right? <laughs> 
And I got students that don't come to class that they don't have A's. <laughs> Season, right? All right, find the horizontal asymptotes. All right, let's see. F of X is going to equal. 2x to the third plus 5 over 3x to the third minus 5. So on these, you just got to figure where is the higher degree. Okay, right, they're even, right? So the top degree equals the bottom degree. So we know if that happens, it's going to be y equals a over b. So now we got to figure out what's my a, what's my b. Horizontal asymptotes got to be y equals, verticals have got to be the x equals. So over time, two thirds is almost to one. So it's going to try to get to that two thirds over time. Never will hit it, but it's going to try, okay? zero faster than others, but all of them eventually I'm going to ride that zero towards infinity, okay? So it looks like I got one more of those because that's two of the cases. Only three things I can do to this one, right? Alrighty. F of X is going to equal X plus 2 over x squared minus 4. Oh, let's get the page somehow. Oh, well, he'll do that one. It's on the bottom still. So I said we'll be y equals 0. Okay. That one supposed to be there. The one that supposed to be there was, so let me try this, f of x equals 7x squared plus 15 over 3x minus 2. So it looks like on this one, so this one was the bottom again. So bottom <coughs> greater than top. But y'all, this one has the top. Mm -hmm. The top is greater than the bottom. And there are no. And you said that was? No asymptotes. No horizontal asymptotes. There you go. And it'll have a choice B that'll say no horizontal asymptote. You just click it and be done. So. That's because these x squareds are going to grow a lot quicker than them x's on the top, and it's going to keep getting bigger numbers on top divided by numbers on the bottom that ain't growing as big. So shooting up. So 
All right, so here's the fun one. So I'm thinking I can get this in real quick. So on this one, we're going to list the domain. X and Y intercepts. And graph. Be sure to label all the asymptotes. So label all asymptotes. So you spell that out or do you got a word for that? <laughs> all right, I guess we need the function. F of X, it's going to be that one accident you wrote over there. F of X equals X plus 2 over X squared minus 4. So I'm going to start out with my domain by setting the bottom equal to 0. So you remember a while ago I, I hit that with the factoring and I factored it into perfect squares. I put x and x and then the two and the two. Well, I'm gonna show you another way to solve this. There's another way you can solve any x squared term with a number. Watch this, I'm gonna add four. So I get x squared equals a four. I can turn that x squared into an x by taking a square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared will equal a plus or minus square root of 4. So anytime you take the square root of a number, it can be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So that gives me x equals a positive or negative 2. So we're going to write the domain in interval notation real quick. So I started at negative infinity, and I'm just cruising until I hit... Negative two, because you're going left to right. All right, you're going to union around negative two until you now hit the positive two. And then union around that positive two until we hit infinity. So remember, each solution has to be unioned around in that interval, okay? <coughs> All right, then it wanted what? X and Y intercepts. To find the X intercept, you set the numerator equal to zero. So that would be X plus two equals zero. So set the top equal to zero. So if I solve that, I subtract two, and I get X is a negative two. That tells me it will cross the x-axis at negative 2. So do y'all remember how I found the y-intercept? So I'm looking for where it crosses the y-axis. So if you remember a while ago, when I looked for the y-intercept, I made x equal 0. zero. So basically, we're finding f is 0 to get the y-intercept. So that will be 0 plus 2 over 0 squared minus 4. So let's see, that gives me what, a 2 on the top. 0 squared is 0, so 0 minus 4 would give me a negative 4. And 2 divided by negative 4, I'm just going to make that a negative 1 half. So I do know it's crossing the y-axis below the x-axis in the negative y range, okay? So now let's get some of the asymptotes we're going to need. Now, am I going to solve it again for the bottom when I've already solved it here, right? So that's telling me that I would have x equals 2, x equals negative 2. Can I keep both of those? Because watch out, remember, if you would have factored that bottom, you would have got an x plus 2, x minus 2, right? Mm -hmm. Which means the x plus 2 asymptote is going to cancel. 
And the one that gave you the x plus 2 was the negative 2, okay? So x equals negative 2 is going to cancel. So the only vertical asymptote is going to be x equals a positive 2. So let me show you. That's one reason why you might want to factor this so you get this. And if you factor it like that, you can tell right here that factor is going to cancel with that factor. So since they cancel, you're canceling out one of your asymptotes. And at that point, it'll have a hole. Now, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I want to show y'all this hole. You see right there, and right there on that one, those little holes on So it's going to put a hole instead of a vertical asymptote. So I don't know if you can see this, but <laughs> there's a hole right there and a hole right there on the grass. Okay. So we've only got the one vertical asymptote. So let's find our horizontal asymptote. Who's, top, who's the higher degree, top or bottom? Bottom. So since the bottom is a higher degree, that means my asymptote is y equals. And there you go. So we should have enough information to make a good graph of this. All right, where's my asymptote? It's a two, so I don't have to go out real far. So I'm just going to do a five. Hopefully that catches everything. So first of all, I'm going to draw the only asymptote I had, which was x equals two. So over here at two, my graph is going to want to shoot up and do asymptote stuff, okay? Now, where was I? The other one that canceled on this side somewhere, I'm going to have a hole in my graph, okay? Now, the horizontal asymptotes eventually are going to try to get to the x-axis, because that's zero for the y. So let's see what we got. Uh, we know the x-intercept was negative 2, right? So that means right over here at negative 2, well, guess what? I can't put a point there, can I? Because we said it was undefined at negative 2, so this is going to be a hole in the graph. So I guess we know which one it's going to be now, right? Because one had a hole on the left side, one had a hole on the right side. Now, we also know that it crosses the y-axis at negative 1 half. So negative 1 half is going to be right in there. Uh, let's see. That's all I needed, right? Yeah. Now, I know the line's coming down this way because my intercept is on the bottom, and it's only going to cross it at this one point. So anything from here is going to go down towards negative infinity. Now, remember, if this side's going down, this side's coming from the above. Now, remember, this side cannot cross the x-axis anymore, can it? So all we can do is ride it out and try to get close to that x-axis, okay? And then on that side, it's just going to right line on that line. Well, it's hard to tell their pictures, boy. They don't zoom them up too good. Yeah. So that had been that C one that I was showing y'all. But mainly on this one, look for the hoe and look for that one asymptote because they like to flip them up, okay? Well, all right, y'all, so we can go to lab now. Now, I will be on Friday. 
to do more of these if y'all want them. Oh, yeah. I will not be able to attend the Friday. Okay, so. We're heading out of town for these. Uh -huh. Now, I did see them down. Uh, I sent my videos out this morning, so I got eight five covered in those. Doing all those problems, okay? I just wanted to give you the heads up. I'm not going to be there. Okay, that's cool. So I probably won't have no on your thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear that sound the other one there, yeah. <laughs> all right, Carol, I'm going to end this, and we will see y'all Friday if you come. Everything, was you able to hear me all right in there? All right, I'll see y'all Friday. I'm going to stop my recording.